me see that map. Okay, here's Hockey Tour. As I remember, that should be on the left, and I don't remember. It is. And here's Greymore. Should be on the right. It is. Now, where are we? What's in the middle? Nothing. That's where we are. <laughs> in nothing? Yes, and for a fellow with my potentialities, this is an ideal location. We'll find our way out when the sun comes up. <laughs> Fine couple of game hunters we are. We come all the way over here from New York, get lost our first night out. Maybe we took the high road instead of the low road. Yeah. Would you like a drink? No, thanks. Good. Leaves more for me. <laughs> Didn't you say you were going to cut back on that stuff? Yes, I did. But I'm a terrible liar. <laughs> Besides, it doesn't pay. I remember once I was going with this wonderful girl, and she used to plead with me and plead with me to give it up. So one day I did. Then we discovered we had nothing more to talk about. <laughs> so we broke up. This forest gives me the feeling of being in a cathedral. Well, if we were, I know where the exit was. Yeah. You don't believe in anything, do you? Of course I do. Really? Like what? Practically anything I can understand. You know, anything that's real to me. Like things I can touch, taste, hear, see, smell, and swallow. <laughs> and what about the things you don't understand? I dismiss them. That makes things very easy for you, doesn't it, Jeff? Uh, comfortable is the word. I envy you. Why? Well, you seem to be very comfortable. I am, aren't you? No, I'm not. <laughs> That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> You've got a fine job, you're engaged to a fine girl, and you're lost in a fine forest. What more do you want? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but something seems wrong, especially about Jane and me, and that makes everything seem wrong. Look how I postponed getting married. Just can't seem to bring myself to get to that altar. Well, I don't know what could be wrong about it. She's young, attractive, fits smack into your niche in life, and on top of all that, she loves you. And just the proper amount, too. Ah, and what's the proper amount? Enough to make you happy and not enough to embarrass your friends. <laughs> it all seems ideal, doesn't it? But why don't I see it? I must be lacking somewhere. Now, don't go talking yourself into an inferiority complex. You don't deserve that. Oh, what do you mean? Well, most of my friends who have inferiority complexes are absolutely right. They're not as good as everybody else, but somebody like you has everything going Shh. for them. Did you hear that? You said there weren't any towns on the map around here. I did. Look around the village. There's a peculiar heavy fog all around it. And there's no mist out in the valley. Only around the village. Come on, let's go over to it. Can't be too far from here. <laughs> Wait till Rand McNally hears about this. Come on.
She's making me kind of sick. <laughs> so gratefully accepted. Aye. Now, the boundaries of our village are thus. To the west, the footbridge. To the east, the wee curric. To the north, the forest. And to the south, La Caron. Be ye warned, ne'er to cross, or night will fall upon Brigadoon forever. Aye. So we shall place it in the public square as we told Mr. Lundy we would. <laughs> Ah, your parents, they like to take charge of things, don't they, Miss Fiona? Aye, especially after everything's been done. <laughs> would have a waistcoat of this that would fit my father. Oh, I think so, Miss Fiona. Hello, Harry. Hello, Fiona. And how 
are you today? How do you expect me to be? This is your wedding day, isn't it? I'm truly sorry, Harry. Well, then I'll be. If anyone's going to pity me, let it be me. Wrapped forever with our this Pleasant village. Uh, what did Angus say, Harry? I forgot. Hello, Harry. Hello, Fiona. It just isn't fair for Charlie Dalrymple to be wedding you, Jean. He's got everything. School in Edinburgh. I know you. And I got nothing. Harry, here. Take this material over to the house and see if there is a waistcoat of it there. Nothing but to be doing this all my life. And why didn't you pay more attention to Maggie Anderson? You know she has a garden for you. Aye, father. Oh, Fiona, I feel so sorry for him. I know, darling. Mr. Beaton, you didn't hate me for not loving Harry, do you? Oh, no, Miss Jean. It is not your fault. Sometimes I think the only woman that could have loved Harry and helped him was his mother. Ah, oh, rest your soul. You'll be coming home soon, Jean. You should stay with your father today. And Fiona, be certain to buy everything that's needed for the wedding supper. I will, Mother. But remember, just what's needed. My aim on this occasion is to be hospitable, not philanthropic. Come, dear. You send the waistcoat to the house, then, Mr. Beaton. Oh, aye, Miss Fiona. <laughs> Hello, Megan. Good morning, Fiona. A jug of cream, please. Ah, Mr. McGuffey will be pleased to the last buy in for a change. Why? Well, when the lads come shopping, they look so handsome. I didn't like to ask them for money. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll never make a profit doing that. No, but I make a lot of friends. <laughs> <laughs> Is this for the wedding tonight? I. Fiona, when are you going to think about marriage for yourself? Oh, I don't know. When I find someone who makes me think of it. And you haven't found anyone up until now who makes you think of it? No. You see, I didn't want to just get married. I think you should only do it if you and your lad want to be together fiercely. And getting married is the only way to do it. That's proper. That's a romantic idea, Fiona. Many a lassies, everyone knows, will try to be married before twenty-five. So she'll agree to most any proposal. All he must be is a man and alive. I hold a dream that there's no compromising. I know there's one certain body for me. One day he'll come walking over. Not, but in an old maid I'll be. 
tell us where we are? Of course we can. We're in Brigadoon. Br Brigadoon? Aye. <laughs> well, that's funny. There's no town called Brigadoon on the map. Ha! I shouldn't have be surprised. You mean you know it's not on the map? Oh, aye. It's a little snobbish of you, don't you think? <laughs> tell me, why isn't it on the map? For good and sound reasons. Oh. What are you all dressed up for? Is this the day you take pictures for postcards or something? We're not dressed up. You mean you always go around with all those clothes on? <laughs> all right. Somebody tell me what this is. What's going on here? We're having an affair. Oh. No. Is that milk you're selling, Dad? I... Well, can I buy some? I'm thirsty. We've been walking all night. I'll be needing to see your money first. Okay. Aye. What is it? Nineteen hundred? Did you give it? A hunk of uranium? Just a shilling. What a loony layout this is. It is very interesting, sir, but it does me no good. Well, what do you mean it does you no good? Sell me something and it will. I'm sorry, lad, but I cannot sell you anything. However, if you're thirsty, I'll give you some milk. Never mind. I don't want any favors. Oh, I see from the coin you're from England? No, we're from America. <gasps> you're Americans? Uh, I am. He's from Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boy. No, wait. Please. We didn't mean to act so strangely. We're just a wee bit taken aback. People do not come here very often. Well, I can understand why. You people stare at us as though we've dropped in from another planet. <laughs> well, does that amuse you? Very much. Quite. Obviously, the uh, daughter of two first cousins. <laughs> <laughs> if you've been walking all night, you must be tired and hungry. When are you like some food to eat and perhaps a place to lie down before you start back? Thank you. It's very kind of you. Good. Oh, my name is Fiona McLaren. I'm Tommy Albright, and this is Jeff Douglas. How do you say? I'm Meg Brocky. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you're happy about that. There's a little tavern on the next street where you can get some food. Oh, I'll take you to it. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeff. I'll call the in uh, first. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. What? Is uh, Miss May going to be taken care of you, sir? I think so. Why? Well, um, I happen to have some uh, plaid trousers here. And after you leave the tavern, Miss Meg should take you someplace to to rest, and you happen to rip your own on a thistle, <laughs> well, I'd be more than pleased to replace them for you. Uh, thanks, old man, but I don't expect to get stuck. Oh, you didn't know it, laddie, but you're stuck now. <laughs> <laughs> now you tend to your selling, Mr. Beaton. <laughs> what a place. Well, say, is there a phone around here I could use? Phone. Yeah. I didn't think we have one. No phone? No, sir. Tell me, what's so strange about this place? Nothing, sir. You're the one who's strange. Charlie! Charlie, I have a bottle of clear air over here. Come and have a wee drag. Oh, God. Well, the Aye. merry bridegroom himself. Bridegroom? Aye. Good morning, Linda. <laughs> He's marrying my sister this evening. Oh. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. Charlie, this is Tommy Albright. He just happened in a little while ago. Ah, what a course. Welcome to you, sir. Thanks. Welcome to you. Thank you. Charlie, you're a dram of good luck. I thank you, Ingles. Some claret, sir. Oh, thank you. I think I'll drink this one to Mr. Forsyth. I just hope you know how great I am to him for postponing the miracle for me. Aye. The what? And may God bless me this evening as much as the heart would bless you if I were he and he were Charles Dalrymple. <laughs> Excuse me, what's that about the miracle? Oh. oh. Tis a toast we have around here. Take it down. <laughs> I'll explain it to you sometime. Oh. Say, that's wonderful. May I have another? That was a wedding guest this year. From now on, tis for sale only. I must buy some claret and ale for the supper. Come with me and you can have some more. Fine. Wallens! Wallens! <laughs> He's an odd lad, isn't he? Aye. He has a peculiar accent. Mm. 
I wonder what American women must be like. Oh, I didn't wonder about women anymore, Angus. I'm not allowed to. Aye, that's right. You've given up the lasses for good. I used to be a roving lad, a roving and wandering life I had. On any lass I found who would try to tie me down. But then one day I saw a maid who held out a hand and I stayed and stayed. And now we're across the green. I go home with Bonnie Jean. Go home, go home, go home with Bonnie Jean. Again, when they're married, you will soon across the green. I'll go home with Bonnie Jean. Go home, go home, go home with Bonnie Jean. Go home, go home. I'll go home with Bonnie Jean. Go home, go home, go home with Bonnie Jean. Go home, go home. I'll go home with Bonnie Jean. In Edinburgh, I used to know a lass with a hair and a name was Joan. And every night at ten, I would meet her in the glen. But now you'll not meet her again, especially not in the glen at ten. For now, across the green, you'll go home with Bonnie Jean. Go home, go home, go home with Bonnie Jean. Go home. Thank you. 
Charlie, you winna forget to come over this afternoon and sign the family Bible. Oh, no, darling, I'll be over. And I do hope, sir, you'll stay for wedding supper. Thank you, but I won't be here that long. Oh, it is a pity. What you gonna do all day, Charlie? Rest, dearie. Rest! <laughs> <laughs> He's a nice kid. Aye, he is that. It's wonderfully refreshing to see a fellow so enthusiastic about getting married. Is it so unusual? <laughs> well, I think it is. Look at me. I'm not bubbling over like Charlie there, and next month I'm facing the minister. You're getting married? Yeah. Oh. Oh, what? I'm very surprised. Somehow you didn't look like the sort of lad who'd want to settle down. No, I didn't say that. I just said I was getting married. <laughs> <laughs> if you feel that way about it, why are you? No, because the girl wants to. Is that reason enough? Well, I don't know how it is here in the Highlands, but in my neighborhood, if you've been going with a girl for a while and she decides she wants to get married, you'd better agree right away and save yourself a lot of trouble. <laughs> why? Well, if you don't, she'll either torment you so you'll marry her out of relief, or she'll be so sweet about it you'll feel guilty and your conscience will make you do it. <laughs> I must say, it doesn't sound like you love her very much. It doesn't, does it? And it also sounds like a very peculiar land you come from. Oh, well, believe me, lass, this ain't the usual hammered off the highway. What was that business about Charlie and the man who postponed the miracle? Oh, that. Yeah. I'm sorry. I can of say. Ah, but you said you'd tell me later. I know, but I can I say. That's fine. You know, if I stick around this place long enough, I'll probably discover everybody in it is slightly nutty. Is that possible? I can I say. Why not? Because I didn't know what nutty means. <laughs> it means slightly insane. Oh, well, well, I can assure you we're all very far from insane. We're a most blessed group of people, and and I never realize how fortunate we are until I meet someone from the outside. I mean, a stranger to Brigadoon. I didn't know anything about you, but from the little you've said, everything you think, I think differently about. And I'm also quite certain that what I think is much more, well, pleasant. And now, I'm sorry I settled that, but you angered me when you called us insane. Uh... You don't like me very much, do you? That's the odd part. I like you very much. I just didn't like anything you say. <laughs> Fiona? I. If I stuck around here today, would you take me to the wedding this evening? Why do you suddenly want to go? No, oh, I cannot say. <laughs> Well then, I'll take you. And I'll be highly pleased you'll be there. You will? Why is that? Because of what I just told you. I like you very much. Hmm. That's right, you did say that, didn't you? Now I'll show you some place where you can lie down and rest. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Gather Heather for the wedding. Well, where do you do that? On the hill. Where the Heather is. <laughs> May I go with you? No, I'll do it much faster. Around. I won't bother you. Really. Maybe I'm the one who's slightly insane. <laughs> Can't we two go walking together Out beyond the valley of trees Out where there's a hillside of heather Curtsying gently in the breeze that's what I'd like to do, see the heather, but with you. The mist of May is in the gloaming, and all the clouds are holding still. So take my hand and let's go roaming through the heather on the hill. The morning dew is blinking yonder. There's lazy music in the rail And all I want to do is wander Through the heather on the hill There may be other days as rich and rare There may be other springs as full and fair But 
pain won't be the same. They'll come and go for this. I know that when the mist is in the gloaming and all the clouds are holding still, if you're not there, I won't go roaming through the heather on the hill. The heather. Yes, it almost sounded like I was falling in love with you, didn't it? Oh, there is a difference between being in love and just being sentimental because you're tired. Uh, is that what I'm being sentimental because I'm tired? I think so, but it is very agreeable. View of the Glen. Thank you. What for? Why, for liking where I brought you. It makes me very happy. You get happy very easily, don't you? <laughs> I. I haven't been in an open woodshed like this since I was a boy, which at this point seems a good 2,000 years ago. Ooh. You mean. You're tired? Aye, Lassie, I'm tired. That's why you brought me here, isn't it? So I could take a nap? Oh, I shouldn't have think a long walk would fatigue a young lad like you. A young lad? Aye, you're very young. <laughs> that is either a deliberate lie or wishful thinking. I am ancient, decrepit, and disintegrating rapidly. What is under here, a rock garden? <laughs> My father used to sleep on it. Ah, that was his second mistake. <laughs> he and my mother met in this shed. You see, my mother was a gypsy. Uh-huh. And one day, she was walking past this shed, and she saw my father asleep on the cot. <coughs> she liked his looks. <laughs> she was a wee bit tired anywho, so she
She took off her shoes, sat in the rocking chair, and waited for him to wake up. And it wasn't long after that that I was born. <laughs> Well, that has got to be one of the sweetest bedtime stories I've ever heard. <laughs> you're sure? You're comfortable? Yes. Very. You been more than kind. And uh, now, if you'd like to round out your generosity, buzz off. <sighs> You're a broad, handsome lad. You should see me when I'm rested. I'm almost robust. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just hate to leave you. Well, you'd better. When I sleep, I make all sorts of odd noises. Who told you? Do you have a wife? No, but I was engaged once. Oh, what happened to the last you were engaged to? She fell in love with a Russian. A Russian? <laughs> yes. Russia is in Europe, isn't it? Yes, more and more. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, not far from here. You just cross the channel and turn left. <laughs> You're a winning lad. A right winning lad! <laughs> now look, lass. I don't know what it is you're after, but I don't want to. I want to go to sleep. But didn't you see I'm highly attracted to you? Thank you. Very much. When I wake up, We'll discuss the whole problem, and believe me, you have a problem. Oh, but when I look at you, lying on the cot, I feel little tadpoles jumping on my <laughs> spine. That is about as repulsive an idea as I think I've heard in years. You know, if flirting were a hobby, you would be a collector's item. But I've been waiting. So oh, long. Go. <laughs> oh, men, you're all alike. I should hope so. You're all brutes. You get what you want from a lass, and then tis farewell. Get what I want? I can't even get you to go away. <laughs> that is what I'm referring to. I, I thought you were interested in me, and, and that's why you let me take you here. You misled me. You certainly have a wild imagination. Can you think of one good reason why I, a strange man, would be interested in you, a strange woman, and at this hour of the day? Of course I can. <laughs> because you're a lad, and I am a lass. Well, with that philosophy, you must have had a provocative career. <laughs> I've had a great many heartbreaks. I don't doubt it at all. At 16 years, I was blue and sad. Then father said I should find a lad. So I said no to become a wife and found the real love of my life. So had Christopher McGill. So I went home and I thought I'd die. Till father said, make another try. So out I went to become a wife and found the real love of my life. He came from the lowlands, the lowlands city. I saw him and knew he was perfect for me. Just one thing that puzzled me and it always Quick, 
fell in love and went down by the creek. The next day he said he'd be back in a week. And I thought he would, for now how was I to know that of all the lowland laddies there was never one as low. I told my father the awful truth. He said, what difference? You've got your youth. So out I went back to be a wife and found the real love of my life. Oh, he was a soldier of fine Highland sun. He told me about all the battles he'd won. He wasted his time telling me about his might. For one look at him decided me to not put up a fight. We skirmished for hours that night in the glen. And I found the sword has more might than the pen. But while I was drowsing, I snored my dismay. And he thought it was a bugle and got up and marched away. Then Pa said, daughter, there must be one. Someone who's true or too old to run. So I'm still looking to be a wife and find the real love. nothing left but to hate everybody and everything in this cursed town. You'll never find peace for a hating lad. It only shuts you off more from the world. A 
And this is only a cursed town if you make it so. To the rest of us, tis a blessed place. Well, then you can keep it. What? Ma'am? Elton? Who's that? My waistcoat cane. Jeannie! Charlie, please go away. I want to come out. Do not obey her, lad. You spy left. <laughs> well, I can hardly wait for the wedding. <laughs> Jeannie! Charlie, please go away. Jeannie. Because they told me I can't be rosy to the wedding music's heart playing. To ease my home when there's nothing wrong in me standing out here and saying, Come to me, then to me, please me good day, darling.
Because they told me I can't be hold Little wedding music start playing To ease my longing There's nothing wrong in Me standing out here and saying Oh, come to Gunter, greet our guest. Uh, greetings. Greetings. Uh, Fiona, where have you been? You know I can dress without you. You mean tis time for you to dress already? Aye, so come. You see, I knew we were out for far too long. I know, but I'm not sorry. Wait for me. I shan't be but a few minutes. Fiona. Good morning, laddie. <laughs> Good morning. Where have you been? This is a nice place. You should have seen the apartment I got. <laughs> Complete with built-in lassie. <laughs> Come in. <laughs> what happened to you? Thistles. What? Never mind, it's professional secret. <laughs> Mine will be ready by the time we leave. And another thing, disregard all that rubbish about Scottish frugality. Their generosity is overpowering. Yes, but how do you feel? Surprisingly well, how about you? <laughs> I've never felt better in my life. You too, huh? <laughs> Maybe the sun gave me the power For I could swim luck moment and be home in half an hour Maybe the air gave me the drive For I'm all aglow and alive What a day this has been What a rare mood I'm in Why, it's almost like me in love, there's a smile on my face for the whole human race. Why, it's almost like being in love. All the music of life seems to be like a bell that is ringing for me. And from the way that I feel When that bell starts to peal I could swear I was falling I would swear I was falling It's almost like being in love When we walked up the brain Not a word like a bee.
I would swear I was falling. It's almost like being in love. Hand me that bundle of heather, Tommy. <laughs> right, darling. Darling? Thank you, dearie. Well, <laughs> when do we start back? Oh, there's no hurry. Let's stick around for the wedding. After all, how often do you get to see? What's the matter? Well, I must be a little touched. Listen to this. Married, Elizabeth Lang to Andrew McLaren, July 2nd, 1719. What's so amazing? People used to get married back then. Wait a minute. Children. Fiona born October 10th, 1722. Jean born April 8th, 1728. Well? well? Fiona has a sister six years younger named Jean. Well? Those are the two sisters in this Bible. It's ridiculous. They're probably just named after them. Hmm. Jean's getting married today. Did you know that? Yes. Do you know the name of the guy she's marrying? They told me at the tavern, Charles Dalrymple? Well, get this. Married, Jean McLaren to Charles McPherson Dalrymple, May 24th, 1746. Now what do you say? Congratulations. No Brigadoon on the map. No phone in the whole town, thanks to a Mr. Somebody for doing something about a miracle. And one or two other things I passed over when I was out with Fiona this afternoon. That hyperthyroid I was with never heard of Johnny Walker. <laughs> Black or red. I don't understand it. I'm beginning to feel a little bit like a complete fool. What are you getting so worked up about? If it makes them happy to disregard 200 years of human bing bang, let them. <laughs> Jeff, I've just spent the most wonderful day of my life, and then I run into something like this. It doesn't make any sense to me. Well, it makes sense to me. It just means that Batty people relax you, that's all. She's not batty. She can't be. Fiona, there must be a logical explanation, even logical enough for you. Fiona! They don't have to explain anything to me. I don't care. What, Tommy? Fiona, come here. Tommy, what is it? Is this your name here in this Bible? I? And why? Oh. Someone seems to have loused up your books. Well, is there an explanation, or isn't there? I, there is, but... I cannot tell you. Well, is there somebody who can? I'd like to know. You'll have to speak with the dominee. The who? Our schoolmaster, Mr. Lundy. Where does he live? Down the road, in a tree. <laughs> he doesn't live in a tree, Mr. Douglas. Mr. Lundy is a great man. All right, Tommy, I'll take you to him. I hadn't wanted to because I was hoping we could have this day together. What's that have to do with anything? It's going to be so hard for you to believe what you'll hear. You'll think there's something wrong with us and you'll leave. I know it. Maybe I will. And maybe I won't. Come on, Jeff. Is it informal or should I bring my three-cornered hat? Come on, I said. <laughs> Why, hello, Fiona. What a pleasant surprise. Mr. Lundy, I'd like you to meet Mr. Toby Albright and Mr. Jeff Douglas. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How do you do, sir? Good afternoon. Where do you gentlemen come from? Ah, we're from New York. We are from New York. Yes. Uh-huh. New York. I heard you. 
Mr. Lundy, I was wondering if you'd be good enough to tell these gentlemen about Brigadoon. They've heard and seen a good deal, and they're very perplexed indeed. Yeah, perplexed is right. I would very much like him, um, I mean them, to know. I would very much like him, I mean them, to know. <laughs> when will you be seated, gentlemen? Are you staying, Fiona? If I may, sir, I'd love to hear it all again. Of course. From what I can gather, nobody around here can talk about anything but you, is that right? Oh, no, that's wrong. Mr. Forsythe could have told you. Forsythe. I heard of him, but I don't think I met him. Oh, likely not. I think he's dead. <laughs> that would pose a problem. <laughs> now, let me warn you before I begin that what I'm going to tell you, you will not believe. It's all right. I've already been warned, but... Why won't I believe it? Because what happened here in Brigadoon was a miracle. And most folk didn't believe in miracles. Miracles require faith. And faith seems to be as dead as... Uh... Mr. Forsyth? <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> now, if an outsider who chanced to come to Brigadoon were to hear the tale from the lips of someone in town, he'd think that lasser lad was daft. And that would lead to many unpleasant and humiliating things for that... That poor lasser laddie. Now, wouldn't it? I suppose so. I suppose so. <laughs> now, this miracle happened, oh, uh, let's see. What's today? Friday. Friday. Oh, that means it happened exactly 200 years ago. 200 years ago, the highlands of Scotland were plagued with witches. Wicked sorcerers who were taking the Scottish folk away from the teachings of God and putting the devil in their souls. Oh, they were indeed horrible, destructive women. I didn't suppose you have such women in your world. Uh, witches? Oh, we have them. <laughs> we pronounce it differently. <laughs> oh. Now, here in Brigadoon, we had an old minister of the Kirk named Mr. Forsythe, and a good man he was. The kindest man in Scotland. Oh, I believe he was. Now, Mr. Forsythe worried about the band of witches coming our way, and he wondered if there wasn't something he could do to protect the folk of his parish, not only from them, but from all the evils that might come to Brigadoon from the outside world after he died. What a kind man. <laughs> now, being mindful, he consulted me about the miracle. Well, it might as well be a well-organized miracle. So early on a Wednesday morning, he asked God to make Brigadoon and all the people in it vanish into the Highland mist. Vanish, but not for always. It would all return just as it were for one day every hundred years. Now, the people would go on leading their customary lives, but each morning when they awakened, it would be a, a hundred years later. And when we awoke the next morn, it was a hundred years later. Amazing. So every day is a hundred years, and all of this happened 200 years ago. Hi, <coughs> lad, which you see is only two days ago to us. Now, Mr. Forsyth had intended to ask for the miracle on uh, Tuesday, but Charles Dalrymple was in school in Edinburgh. He was not expected back till Tuesday late. Now, Mr. Forsyth, not wanting anything to go wrong with the wedding, Postpone the praying till Charlie got back. Wasn't that sweet of him? Yeah. Let me ask you something. Suppose somebody around here gets fed up and wants to leave, then what? Oh, he cannot leave. Wait a minute. You mean we have to stay here now? Oh, no, no, lad. But according to Mr. Forsythe's contract with God, if any one of Brigadoon leaves, the enchantment is broken for all, and that night, when the people go to sleep, Brigadoon will disappear forever. Okay, look, I'm not saying I believe all this, but just for argument's sake, suppose a stranger who came to Brigadoon wanted to stay. Could he? I lad, he could. Mr. Forsyth provided for that. <laughs> well, he didn't miss a trick, did he? <laughs> <laughs> no, lad, he didn't. A stranger can stay if he loves someone here. Well, not just Brigadoon, mind you, but someone in Brigadoon enough to want to, to give up everything and stay with that one person, which is how it should be. Because after all, lad, if you love someone deeply, anything is possible. I think I like that part the best. 
Shouldn't you be thinking about changing for the wedding? Oh, aye, I had. Tommy, will I see you later? Yes, I'll be here. Thank you, Tommy. I think I want to stick around and see if this place evaporates like you say. <laughs> I must hurry now. Thank you, Mr. Lundy. Oh, she's a dear lass. Yes, I'm beginning to find that out. Tell me, Mr. Lundy, you're all perfectly happy living here in this little town. Well, of course, lad. After all, sunshine can peep through a small hole. But at night, when you go to sleep, what's it like? Ah, well, for me, it is like being carried on shadowy arms to some far-off cloud, and, and there I float till morning. And yet, sometimes I think I hear strange voices. Voices? Aye, lad. I've pondered it when I'm awake, and I think I have a feeling I'm here in the outside world. Oh, there must be lots of folk out there who like a brigadier. Ah, tis the wedding time. Macmillan. MacLeod. Beaton. MacLeod. to be a wedding. <laughs> there is no minister in Brigadoon now, and in most villages this would be a calamitous thing, but we know tis a blessing. When there is no minister present, it is perfectly proper according to the laws of Scotland for two people to be wed by sincere mutual consent. There need be nothing in writing. All that's necessary is the promise of love as long as you both are on earth. Go ahead, lad. I will love you till I die. And I'll make all effort to be a good husband to you. And so much will I try to be a fine and loving wife. Kiss her, lad. Oh, Mr. Forsyth, I know would have liked to be here. But if you are both good and true to each other, then you cannot help but live in the grace of God. And Mr. Forsyth could have asked no more than that. Are we married now, Mr. Lundy? Are we married now, Mr. Lundy? <laughs> Aye, lad, you're married. <laughs> Aye! 
Watch it too much. I'm leaving Brigadoon. And it's the end of all of us! The miracle's over!
sweet and sure came this way, and we cannot be true, but we hang on that and key their head for the prey. Keep your eye over you when I find them that he's all down. Tomorrow will never, never come. Let's separate. Left, I'll go right. He can't be too far from here. If he comes into sight, hold him fast. Many lives are depending on it. This must not end tonight. They must know that tomorrow is really gonna come. Lad, say a prayer, I'm afraid Harry Beaton is dead. Looks like he fell on a rock and it crushed in his head. Nobody wanted for Harry to be smitten down. All that we wished was to keep him from leaving the town. to be sad about it. It is clear God's own hand and we all should be grateful and glad about it. Though it may be very true what the lads here have said. Don't tell the rest till tomorrow that Beaton is dead. They'll find he's dead tomorrow.
spy from over there. Come, come. Well, father. It's all right now. He was stopped. Thank heaven. Was he hurt? Oh, uh, no, dearie. Just, just scratched a bit. There's no need for grieving now. We must go on with the wind supper. He, he didn't get away, Mr. McLaren. No, no, Archie. Then, then where is my son? I, I want to see him. I thank God you stopped him from this terrible intention, but, but I, I want to see him. He's all right, Archie. He's in good hands. Besides, it is best he be left alone for a while. Come join us for a bit of supper. I'm too ashamed for him, Mr. McLaren. I, I, I can't join you. But, Archie, come, everybody, back to the Glen for some food and ale. The alarm is over. Angus, have you seen Tommy? The American, Fiona. Why, no, I don't think he came with us. Come, Fiona. Fiona. Tommy, I thought you might have gone. No, I didn't go. I couldn't. And you're all right? Of course I'm all right. <laughs> Who would have died if anything had happened to you? I love you so. You love me? I. But how can you be so sure in just one day? I didn't know. Tis just when a lass falls in or out of love, she knows it right away. I wish my emotions could be that clear to me. Why? I have the sensation. I'm hearing my own secrets being told. You mean you think you're in love with me? Think? What good does thinking do? If I thought about it, it wouldn't make any more sense than the miracle. What I feel is something else. What do you feel then, Tommy? This is hard to say, but as I wandered through the lee, I felt for just a fleeting moment that I suddenly was free of being lonely. Then I closed my eyes and saw the very reason why. I saw a man with his head bowed low. His heart had no place to go. I looked and I thought to myself with a sigh there, but for you go I. I saw a man walking by the sea, alone with the tide was he. I looked and I thought as I watched him go by there, but for you. Trying not to cry Till the day you found me There among them was I I saw a man who had never known A love that was all his own I looked and I thanked all the stars in the sky. There but for you go I. Oh, Tommy. Tommy, darling. I love you, Fiona. I guess that's all there is to it. I've wanted to hear you say it. Even though it be at the last minute like this. The last minute? I soon know tis the end of our day. And then, and then you vanish. But Fiona, I can't leave you, not now. Wait a minute. Didn't Lundy say someone could stay if he loves somebody enough? I? Well, that's for me. 
Where do I go? Who do I talk to? Where do I get a passport to disappear? Oh, Tommy, Tommy! I love you, Fiona. I'm afraid to be without you ever again. I saw a man who had never known a love that was all his own. I looked and I thanked all the stars in the sky there but for you.
I'm not going back with you, Jeff. Just for the record, what are you talking about? I'm staying here. <laughs> You're pulling me Bonnie's leg. Aren't you? No. I've never been more serious about anything in my life. In just one day, I feel more a part of her and all of this than I ever have about Jane or anybody or anything back home. My dear boy, that's because it is one day. But do you realize if you stay here, it's for always? I know. And do you know how long always is around here? It's a heck of a long time. <laughs> I know. This can't be a trial marriage because you can't change your mind after trying it out for six or seven hundred years. I won't ever want to. You're absolutely positive that there'll never come a day when you'll miss your family, your friends, the life you belong to. How, how can you know that now? Because, this is where you'll think I'm crazy, but because I believe in her. And what's more, I believe in this place. You do not. You just want to. This Highland voodoo town makes no more sense to you than it does to me, so how can you believe in it if you don't understand it? When we leave here in a few weeks or even a few days, you won't remember a thing. That's the way a dream is. What do you mean a dream? That's what this is, a dream. Even now, you're not really moved by it. You just think you are. How do you know? Because I do. You see that funeral that was here a moment ago? Yeah, why? I'm responsible for it. What? Harry Beaton, I killed him. You did what? I killed him. Accidentally, of course. Tonight out in the forest, he suddenly ran past me from behind a bush without even thinking what I was doing. I stuck out my foot and... Down he went, and I heard his head hit a rock with a very nasty thud. Jeff, I'm so sorry. What for? You, mu you must feel half dead inside. On the contrary, I don't feel a thing. You mean you actually don't feel anything? Nothing, except like going home. But why don't you? Because this is a dream. A good one for you and a bad wait! one. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, will you? There you see. I've confused you, haven't I? Yes, you have. And if you really believed in this place as much as you say you do, I couldn't do that. I'll wait for you outside the town. Tommy, what did he mean by that? Fiona tells me you want to stay, lad. Tommy, what is it? It's no good, Fiona. I'm leaving. And it isn't because I don't love you, I think I do. I guess I just don't trust my own feelings. You mean you can't accept everything? That's about it, I guess. You better hurry, Fiona. There is not much time left. Mm. You should not feel ashamed of yourself, Tommy. Tis the hardest thing in the world to give everything, even though tis usually the only way to get everything. Do you understand at all? <laughs> Fiona, you won't remember that way, and neither will I. You and the world we knew will glow till our life is through. For you're part of me from this day on. And so. Someday if I should love
love, it's you I'll be dreaming of, for you're all I'll see from this day on. These hurried hours were all the life we could share. I will go with not a tear, just a prayer that when we are far apart, you'll find something from your heart has gone. mustn't be sorry about anything. I'm not. In fact, I shouldn't be surprised if I'll be less lonely now than I was before you came. I think real loneliness is not being in love in vain, but not being in love at all. But it'll fade in time. No. It will do that. fears and no doubts. Goodbye. Goodbye, Tommy. And still forget that any day and any night for always and always I love you. I love you. I love you. Frank, DDT? The usual, bourbon. Why do you say the usual? Have I been drinking it long? Continuously, since you got back from Scotland four months ago. Well, I just decided I don't like it. It's not half as good as the whiskey mother used to make. Give me some gin. What do you have with it? A little bourbon. <laughs> right away, sir. Uh, hey, Frank, what time is it? I forgot to put on my... 610. I ought to be getting home. Frank, give me one for the road. I like to drink from portal to portal. It's just about time for Miss Ashton to call. Who? Jane Ashton, Mr. Albright's fiance. Don't tell me you don't remember her. All right, I won't. <laughs> what about her? Well, it's just at about this time every night she either calls or comes in, or both, looking for Mr. Albright. She does, huh? Yes, and from what I gather, she can't find him. Thanks for the warning. I'll drink up and get out of here. Don't you like Miss Ashton, sir? Oh, very much, but not when she's stalking Mr. Albright. I tell you, Frank, scratch the surface of any woman, and she'll enjoy it. But where 
Where is Mr. Albright? Nobody knows, Frank. He quit his job a month ago, picked up his parcels, and vanished like Brigadoon. Like who? That was the name of my brother. <laughs> he ran away. Hello, Frank. Oh, hello, Mr. Albright. It's nice to see you. Good to see you. Uh, Tommy. Jeff. Tommy Albright. Oh. It's my good friend Tommy. He's back. Here, sit down. Sit down. Where have you been all month, Tommy? Well, up on a farm in New Hampshire. On a farm? Digging around in all that dirty dirt and everything? What were you doing up there? Uh, enjoying myself. Ryan Soda, please, Frank. Yes, sir. Well, if you like farms that much, maybe you can buy one when you get married. Yeah. I don't know if I ever want to get married. Why? Well, because, my dear old tank, I'm in love with someone else. And I cannot get over it. Oh. And the trouble is, because I can't be with her, I can't be with anyone else. That's why I went away. So many things remind me of her. When I'm talking to people, they might say one little word that opens the door to a memory for me, and suddenly I'm a few thousand miles away with her. And slowly I drift back to the conversation. They ask me a question. Haven't heard a word they said. I don't know what they're talking about. Well, you must be fascinating company. <laughs> it's, it's easier when I'm alone. Tommy? Jane. What a wonderful surprise. Hello, Jane. Oh. When did you get back? Hello, Jeff. A little while ago. <laughs> How are you, Jane? I've been worried half to death about you. I'm fine, Jeff. How are you? Oh, let me look at you. Well, I've had a bit of a cold lately, but other than that, I I'm... must say, you do look wonderful. So do you, Jane. I hate to uh, eat and run, but I think I'll go up to my room and have a drink. Okay, Jeff. I'll see you later. Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. I put it on my bill, Frank. Your bill, sir, it's getting awfully high. So am I. Tommy, why didn't you write me? Well, nothing to say, I guess. Drink? Old fashioned, please. And why didn't you wire me you were coming in? After all, darling, I did think the minute you'd get in town, you'd call me. Or come to me. Or, in fact, why didn't you? Out of New York. Oh, no. I don't want to do that. I didn't think so. And I told Mr. Jackson. Who? Herbert Jackson. Right, right. Who's he? I already told you. He's a real estate man I've been working with. I told him you'd call him. I can hardly wait. Please do. I'm trying so hard to arrange everything. Do you still want Jeff to stand up for you? Well, yeah. If he can, why? Oh, nothing. <laughs> It's just that he's so impossible these days. Everybody's bored to death with him. I'm not interested in what everybody thinks, especially the everybody we know. You've certainly been antisocial since you returned from Scotland. If you really want to avoid everybody, why don't we take Mr. Jackson's house? It's far away and right on top of a high, beautiful hill. Jane, no. No what? There's going to be no wedding next month. Do you mean you're postponing it again? No, I'm not postponing it. I'm calling it off for good. 
calling it off. I can't do whatever. Well, you have a nerve. After all this time, I've waited for you and tried to be patient and put up with your idiotic whims and temperament. I'm sorry. You've been wonderfully kind to me. But something strange happened these past few months that I can't explain. And now I don't fit in here anymore. I think you're going clean out of your mind. But I refuse to stand here and argue with you, Mustafar. Let's go home and talk about things. If you think anyone else is going to put up with your nonsense, you're raving mad. So think that over, Mr. Albright, when you're all alone. I think real loneliness is not being in love in vain, but not being in love at all. You understood, Fiona. I didn't. Never faded. These hurried hours were all the life we could share. Still, I will go with not a tear, just a prayer that way. Are you sober? I want to go back to Scotland. I said I want to go back to Scotland. Never mind what more. Do you want to go with me? Okay, get some flight reservations right away. I know it isn't fair. I know it doesn't make any sense, but I want to see where it was. I want to go, do you hear me? I want to go! <laughs> It's awful. Unbelievable and awful. What is unbelievable and awful? To think that somewhere out there between the stars and the mist, there's somebody I want so terribly. She's not dead, she's only asleep. Yet I'll never see her again. Did you come all the way over here just to say that? <laughs> You could have told me that on the phone in New York for a nickel. No. And I'll tell you why. She became so real to me that I had to come back here and see for myself that the place didn't really exist. <laughs> That's not the way it worked for me. For me, it seemed so much like a dream, I had to convince myself that it ever happened at all. <laughs> That's the difference between you and me. Tell me about it. Well, I found that sometimes what you believe in becomes more important to you than all the things you can explain away or understand. Why do people have to lose things to find out what they really mean? Well, take a last look around here and let's go. We got lost here once. Okay. Oh! 
Tommy lad, ye, my, my, you must really love her. You woke me up. Come, lad. You can't be serious. Oh, you should not be too surprised, Tommy. I told you, when you love someone deeply, anything is possible. Even miracles. Thank you.